<coughs> ah, hello, scrappers. Back in the shop again today. Uh, today I thought we'd tear down an air conditioner A-frame. I had it out there kind of in the way, so... It's got stuff in here in the way, too, but... I'll get to that. I've just been, uh... Last few days I've been mainly focusing on trying to get that trailer loaded. And, uh... What I'd like to be doing today, but I do to get a video out, so I will go ahead and knock it out real quick. Those are 3 8 bolts, there's just four of them. Of course, most of these are different from another, one another, so just got to kind of figure out what size as you go. And then I got four quarter inch ones. That screw got away. Landed on the workbench. So not all the screws I see on this thing. But as you know with this thing we got light steel here, shred, also known as tin, but it's not actually tin, about the wheelbarrow in, throw this stuff in, Okay, there may be more screws holding this. It looks like a couple tabs have been over right there. Nope, there's nothing holding it. Okay, I'm going to flip it over on the side. Oh, that piece just fell right off. trailer here in just a little bit. That pile of dirt. Good thing I got a dirt floor. Kind of like sweeping it up under the rug, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, I'll kind of get this stuff out of the way. In this piece we got brass fittings here, big brass fitting there, there goes peanut butter, this stuff here can be aggravating sometimes. This isn't too bad, it's a little bit of foam and electrical tape, but sometimes they got that tar-like stuff on there. And here it looks like we've got some, some brass uh, strapping. Probably brass screw and brass nut on here too. So you got to always kind of be on the, on the lookout for that. I say, okay, where is it? You still really can't see it that well, can you? There you can see it. If I hold the camera still, it'd be even better, huh? We've got a little bit of brass nuts here, brass screw, brass strapping, and it's just to hold that on. It's Phillips head. I'll go ahead and change over real quick. Just in case. I don't want to go too far because being brass, it's not going to stick to the magnet. Okay. 
going to set it on the workbench right now. That way I can test it with a magnet, double check. Bring some of this stuff out of the way so I can get in there. Stuff, I'm just going to use the angle grinder. Probably go a whole lot faster and easier. Try and clean off some of this, this foam out of the way. So we've got a brass nut here. There's a yeah. And again, it's a hot shot. Hey. Move my hand. There it is. We've got a brass nut here. There's a little piece of brass that goes into the copper. So I'll probably cut around that and get that brass out. Got a brass fitting here. A couple of the brass fittings. And I'll have to check this. A lot of times these are steel. So quick work here. Cutting these ends off, if they're aluminum. You can just let it go as they are, as they are. But of course, if you can cut the copper off, it's then then you got plain copper. Uh, a lot of times, you can cut between the aluminum and the steel, but you got to keep it real close. If you keep, if you keep it real close, the noodles come out real easy. But uh, you're not too good at that. Then the next best thing, try to get in and turn it where you can kind of see the angle I'm getting at. Bend these up and out of the way. Sometimes you can cut close here, the noodles just fall off, and then all you got to do is take a hammer and knock that thing off. Start at one end and give it a little bend and then work, work your way across and go back and do it again. A couple of bends back and forth, that'll snap right off of there. Actually, adjustable end wrench. I think get a little more leverage with this. You don't have to really do any squeezing. Give your muscles and tendons a little break. Okay, there's one. 
I'm going to set it aside for the moment. chance of rain tomorrow and Friday and we need it we're kind of in a drought well, I've got this one where I want it hand here to hold this thing for me. this is these noodles kind of go everywhere so pick up what I can and a month two months down the road I'll find a few more Catch them all. 
looks like I got them all pretty close to the steel. So I can get in here and pry it away. Busy working and not really paying attention to the, to the view on the camera. Yeah, that's not one to try. Of course, I'm trying against aluminum pins. There's not much there. ago I went to the inside because someone mentioned well it's easier to do it from from the outside like this and really it is kind of an old habit doing it from the inside just gotta kinda get it now you get a screwdriver get it started Some are definitely easier than others, and uh, one thing you see a lot of at the scrap yards, you'll see them, they, they cut it from the inside where the metal and the noodles are all in one piece, and they actually sell them like that. Which you guys may not want to take the time, because it is a little bit time consuming get it cleaned up. I don't know if I can get a better swing to tie it from this side. Some might be the way to do it too is put the claw hammer in there. Try it. 
a little angle on this, maybe you can see it better. I can get around here. I can work better with that. Getting in the way of the camera. I do. Sometimes I come right off like that first one did. Sometimes they're a little more. There's not a whole lot of hammer can't take care of that. Keep it entertaining, right? four ounces on that so I looked on one website they're giving a dollar something a pound dollar thirty dollar forty something like that I don't remember so if it's a dollar forty that's like fourteen dollars right there that's only half of it so this one's probably the same size, maybe another 14 bucks, 28 dollars. Not too shabby. That was off. This came off that big job. Let's see if I can't break this off. get in a little closer maybe eliminate some of that vibration I've got these Diablo blades on my Amazon affiliate page
Yeah, I know the weather's cooling off and, and uh, scrap's going to start getting a little more scarce out there for those that are street scrapping. And, I'm not sure how the dumpster diving goes. And then, uh, of course, a lot of the guys that do this for a living, they have they have contracts where they go by once a week, once a month, every other month, whatever. In different auto bodies or mechanics, muffler shops. Some of them probably get their scrap free, others probably pay a little bit for it. They work out some some kind of a deal with their source. There's a lot of different ways to find scrap metal out there. But uh, well, last winter I did a little driving around the neighborhoods and uh, Really didn't see much of anything out there. If I did, it was like a metal office chair or something. Then you got to ask yourself, is that even worth getting out of the vehicle for? You know. Of course, you're out there anyway, and it all adds up. Drink of water here. Yeah, this thing's taking a little time, but still, you figure $28 and less than an hour to clean it up. It's not too too shabby. Now, well, for giggles, let's go to the other side this time. What I do here when I'm cutting down, I try to give it a little twist to keep the blade angled towards the tin for the shred, the light steel. came out real nice. I don't see any aluminum fin on this at all. If you get like one layer it's not too bad but what you want to avoid is getting three, four, or five layers. So I'll show you this way too and then you, you can try it both ways and see which works better for you. But uh, sometimes, sometimes you can pop them out like that. Usually I can get a hold of them and then use the uh, rounded rounded part of the channel locks to just kind of roll it right on out. You can see it's trying to fold on me, so you got to kind of hold it down. these two hammers out of the way. Don't need them any longer. 
sometimes once you get in there, you just pop them right out. My hand's kind of in the way of the video on that, but Off. I'm hoping to do a melt video soon. I gotta get out there and clean the tip of the burner the siphon nozzle. Last time I used it, it wasn't working too good, so I thought it needs clean. You get a few that are kind of stubborn. Anyway, that's it for that. So, uh, hey, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends about it. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Take a look around the channel and see what you think. And, uh, hope to see you guys all in the next video. i to zoom it out a little bit. So I'm going to try to, well, now the weather's cooling off, coming into October, that's the last month I got the ad running, so uh, things probably be slowing down as far as pickups, so now I got projects to do around here through the winter, and I got to clean up all the stuff that I brought in, or get most of it, and I still have a bunch of uh, air conditioner condenser units out there, probably a dozen of them that I brought in, and I think eight or nine of them I brought in the year before last, or last year or something like that. So I try to get get most of them out of the way. So I might be doing one of those every two, three weeks. With about four months out of the year, I don't run the ad. So November through February, I start running it again in March. So we'll see how we go with, during the slow time. I'll probably try to get out and do a little street scrapping if I can, or try to see, you know, pick some up here or there. Might run some ads on Facebook or something and see if I can pick up some appliances. <clears throat> I'll just have to see how much I got out there and how fast I move along. Now that I got the dump trailer, I want to bring in some fill dirt and level up some areas. You know, like out here for one, where it makes it easier to move, move stuff around. Uh, I need to bring in some gravel. Uh, I want to do that add-on out back, so I'll probably bring in a load of sand and kind of till it into the dirt I got out there because there's a, some videos I watched on YouTube about you take Portland cement basically one bag of Portland cement for every you know, three foot by three foot area nine square feet is <clears throat> about what I figured up and uh, the sandier the better they say so I'm gonna break, try to bring in a load of sand and till it in and then basically set down kind of put it in grids you know three foot by three foot and uh, set the bags down in there and then cut them open and spread it out, kind of lightly hose it down, keep the dust down and till it in. They say you ho till it, you know, and you got to have a packer where you can pack it, level it, rake it. But they say keep hosing it down for even three or four days after you get it done. They say go out there and hose it down. So I may do that, that way it will harden the floor and I won't have all this loose dirt. And uh, who knows, once I get that done, I might do it to this room here too. But have to get everything out of here for a couple of weeks to do it. And this hill's kind of a, on a slope anyway, but it'd be nice to get it cleared out of here. And uh, I got too much junk in this little area anyway. But <clears throat> once I get that other area, it'll, it'll be nice. I can set it up better, have uh, a covered area for doing 
my melting and stuff like that. So, hey, we'll see you guys uh, in the next video. So, you take care. Happy scrapping. Bye-bye.